Hi loves, this is our outlining mini lesson for research and let's get going. So when we think about outlines, you know, some classes they're required, sometimes we want to do quick outlines before we write, but why outlines? Um, outlines help create a logical order of information where you can look at how each of those ideas um, functions together, how they create a hierarchy of, of relationships. Helps us also keep track of large amounts of information. Um, these next five bullets is just a quick reminder of kind of the whys. So besides those two pieces of information in a research paper, um, these five things are outlines for outlines in general. It really just helps us in the process of writing. It helps you organize your ideas, your material, in a logical form and it shows a relationship among those ideas in your writing no matter what kind of writing. Um, the, it also constructs an ordered overview of your writing so that before you start writing you can show it to a teacher, you can pass it by a friend, a colleague, no matter what you're writing. Um, it, it kind of gives an overview of that. A lot of professors of mine at least um, would give us outlines for example of their lectures and then we could take notes off of that because it provided an overview of writing. So outlines have a role not only in research writing um, but many kinds of um, writings and speeches and things like that. Some people give speeches from outlines. So in this particular situation how do I start or in any situation really? First you have to determine the purpose of your paper and we know for the purpose of this paper it is an argument research paper and um, so we know that we have to present the other side, we know we have to present facts and data and details and quotations and paraphrases that help us um, develop our thesis statement. We also have to determine the audience of the paper. So for example, even in this kind of situation, I know, you know, that I am the audience of the paper. However, um, who would the perceived audience of the paper be? Could it be Time Magazine? Could it be a medical journal? Probably not, but um, something like that. Maybe an environmental journal. Maybe it's the Westerly Sun. So if you think about who your audience is, that's going to help you organize your idea. What and what do they need to hear and when do they need to hear it? In which order? Will help you determine um, your outline. Finally, you have to develop the thesis of the paper, which luckily we've already done. So we've kind of already done the, the initial parts, but no matter what kind of writing or speaking that you do, this is how you go about starting your outline. Then what? Okay, so now we have all of those things. We have our thesis, we have, well, our working thesis, of course. We have our audience and we have our purpose. Now we want to list all the ideas that we want to include in our paper. So at this point, we have lots of notes that we've taken from our sources, and we want to just start kind of lining everything up. What do we have to work with here? Then begin to group related ideas together. We need to organize that list. Now sometimes, you know, it's not going to be just source by source. I'm not just going to review or recap or um, give an overview of one source and then move on to the next source. These ideas are going to overlap and, and intertwine. So it's important to be able to organize and group those related ideas together even before you start writing your outline. Then arrange the material in subsections from general to specific or from abstract to concrete or in, excuse me, in our case, um, you know, if we're thinking a problem solution kind of an essay, a research paper, uh, we can arrange it in that way, but we have to have a clear order of information. <clears throat> so you're always asking yourself, why am I putting this here? Why am I putting this next? What, what subtopic should go first and why? And if you can have a solid answer uh, behind the order that you choose, then it's going to be a lot easier for you to, to understand the logic of your um, argument. And then finally, label then you need to label those those ordered organized groups together into subtopics, subheadings, and then you can start um, creating your outline. So things to remember. When you think about um, ordering your subtopics, again, you need to think about where it will go in and why. And consider how each idea relates to one another and builds upon one another to um, strengthen what you're trying to prove. So we have our thesis. We have to make sure that what we're 
what we're writing um, actually supports that. And in addition, what evidence best supports our ideas? Because we have lots and lots and lots of notes that we took. But what pieces of information, what uh, revealing citations are the best? What paraphrases can we use? Because we don't want to put in too much. But we don't want to also just put in one quotation um, that's that's going to support it because that doesn't do a very good job. Uh, and finally, think about how to acknowledge the other side of the argument, which we've been talking about. And where do we do that? Do we do that at the beginning? Do we do it in our introduction? Do we do it at the end of the paper? Um, so think about those. <clears throat> so MLA strikes again. When we do our outline for this paper, um, we're going to do it in MLA format because that's what our school has adopted. Now when you get to college, maybe you write in APA or maybe you write in a different form. But for our purposes, it's MLA. Um, so up here you'll see the thesis, um, single underline, the other side, double underline your change or stand, which did not show up on here. <laughs> I apologize. Um, if you don't have your other side in in your thesis statement, not a problem. You can just double underline your change or stand. Now when you look at the, the format of this, you see a, a mixture of Roman numerals and alphabet, and it's called alphanumeric, and, and I'll talk about that in a second. So you have your um, subtopic number one underneath your thesis. Then you have your first main idea that supports your subtopic number one, evidence with explanation. So you have your paraphrases or quotes, and then how it relates to the next point. Does it compare, contrast? Does it add an example? Um, and then you give your second support point with quotations and evidence, etc. How does this relate to your next point? Uh, it's depending on how many more support points you put in there. And then um, your last part of the subtopic will be what conclusions can you draw from this first paragraph or first couple of paragraphs to build on your thesis? How does this subtopic advance your thesis? So this subtopic number two looks just like the subtopic number one, um, and it continues on for all of your subtopics. Now, it's very important to note that just because it's a subtopic does not mean that this whole thing here is going to be just one paragraph. In fact, most likely, there's going to be a paragraph for each sort of support point, and that's really important to, as we move away from this idea that everything is written in a five paragraph essay. This isn't an essay, it's a research paper. It's an argument research paper. So some subtopics might have one par or excuse me, one paragraph or two paragraphs. Some topics might have three paragraphs or four paragraphs as you get into longer paper writing. So we have to have to have to step away from that idea that everything is written in a five paragraph essay. Got it? All right. Um, so yep. now in this case, I only put subtopic one and two on here. There's going to be um, a lot more for you, probably three. So here's I'm a good writer's example. It's quite small, and, and uh, I, but I just wanted to put it on here for you. So in this case, I have presented two of her subtopics. Um, her thesis statement, remember, is although the current trend of education promotes standard-based learning, teachers must not forget the importance of imagination in the classroom. So this, of course, would be double underlined, which obviously did not translate in here. Um, in the first subtopic, you have she has standards-based education, and she's it looks here like she's going to create her counter-argument. So this is just her organizing her ideas. Her first support point for her subtopic, um, it looks like she's written her topic sentence, or a topic sentence. Standards-based education is a well-intentioned movement that has taken over education in the 21st century. So here she writes, oh, it's nice in theory. This must be how she's going to explain her, her topic sentence. Um, here's some quotes. I see that she has used MLA formatted citation in those quotations. She has three possible quotations. Now when I look at this, I know that Ima is not going to necessarily use every single word of any of all of those sentences, um, of all those citations. Maybe she's going to paraphrase some of them. But she has her information in here so she knows that she can draw from those. So she already has two sources that she's using and it looks like her conclusion or her, her transition into the next idea is that it is different than reality. So it's nice in theory but different in reality. 
So here's her next sentence. In reality, however, standards-based education creates a variety of problems. So I'm assuming I'm going to read about her problems. Um, high stakes tests may lead to, oh, okay, so now I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five problems that, that this author outlined and why that is important. Okay, so, so it looks like she has a lot of information here that she can draw from. And then finally, um, while the argument for standards seems like the answer, with them come significant drawbacks. So here she's talking about her thesis statement. Um, although the current trend of education promotes standard-based learning, why is that important? Here it is. So this first subtopic looks like she's probably going to have about two paragraphs for that first subtopic. Um, and that's, that's a pretty pretty good start that she has and it looks like the formatting is kind of confusing but you can go back to the initial slide um, the next subtopic which would be subtopic number two not just one uh, is imagination so this one was standards based education this one is imagination let's see what she's going to do an over focus on standards limits imagination so that's her topic sentence she's going to highlight the shift in emphasis and then I see that she has one quote and she leaves me a little note I want more information to support now for you guys that's okay when you're writing your um, outline this is where you're going to find gaps in your information and if you find gaps that just redirects you to find more um, information go back into your sources see if you can find another paraphrase um, or quotation and that'll help guide you before you start writing your paper and you have empty spaces in your paper so you can see that she goes on to her next her imagine her second paragraph under her subtopic imagination is imagination is imperative for students now this looks like she has a lot more information down here so most likely this is going to be two paragraphs so whereas this first subtopic was two paragraphs this was one maybe two this might be even three or four paragraphs so she has to really take that when she starts to write and decide how she's going to um, open that up. So this is a, a fluid process. This is just an outline. It's just for the beginning to start. Here's her works cited page and this is an important part of um, an outline. Notice that these are not, I repeat, not annotated bibliographies. She's already done that. So what she's going to do is take away the annotations and only include the sources that she puts in her outline because we might have researched seven sources but she's only using five because that's what she's decided in her outline maybe when she goes to find more information she needs to add something to this works cited but for now this is her works cited page notice that it's in alphabetical order um, notice that it's a hanging indent and and that everything is all in MLA format so the last thing that uh, I want to talk about is just that it's not we're doing alphanumeric outlines it's just it's not full sentence outlines um, it's not informal it's it's quite formal but it's it's just kind of fragments of ideas to organize ideas but there's also full sentence outlines that can help you um, really outline papers almost exactly how it's going to end up when you end up writing the paragraphs so if that works for you in other contexts feel free to do that um, there's also something called an informal outline which is what you might do for an on-demand writing task where you have your information you brainstorm you quickly bullet out how you want to put your information think about the um, transitions and and that's another option but for for the purposes of this paper we are going to try an alphanumeric outline to try to organize ourselves and that's it enjoy <laughs>